In this video, we're going to consider exact differentials in three dimensions. Remember what we did in the earlier videos. Um, the general form for a line integral in two dimensions is p dx plus q dy. And p is some expression that can involve x and y, likewise for q. And again, we saw examples of these in our earlier videos. If this expression, p dx plus q dy, if that is the differential of some function, and that's called an exact differential, and as we saw in our earlier videos, the test for exactness is whether the partial of p with respect to y equals the partial of q with respect to x. And notice the pattern here. p is the coefficient of dx. q is the coefficient of dy. So we take this partial derivative not with respect to x, but with respect to the other one, with respect to y. And same thing here. We don't take the partial that with respect to y, but with respect to the other variable, x. And now we're going to do the same thing, except when we have um, a three-dimensional case. So suppose that we have some function of the variables x, y, and z. Then the total differential of that function would be expressed like this. This, of course, is exactly what we did in two dimensions. Just take the partial of the function with respect to x times dx plus the partial of that function with respect to y times dy and the partial of that function with respect to z times dz. And again, this is just strictly an extension of what we've done in the uh, earlier videos. Now, suppose that we have a line integral. Really, it would be a space integral uh, where we have p dx plus q dy plus r dz. Well, now, this can be a function of x, y, and z. This can be a function of x, y, and z. And r can be a function of x, y, and z. Now, if this is an exact differential, then that means that this expression is the differential of some function, which means that we're calling p would be the partial of that function with respect to x. And what we're calling q would be the partial of that function with respect to y. And what we're calling z would be the partial of that function with respect, or what we're calling r would be the partial of that function with respect to z. q would be the partial of that function with respect to y, and p would be the partial of that function with respect to x. Now, suppose that we take, now we don't take the partial of z with respect to x, but we can take it with respect to the other variables with respect to z and with respect to y. So let's take the partial of p with respect to z. Again, if this is an exact differential, p then is going to be the partial of some function divided by x. And again, what function would that be? Well, this whole expression would be the differential of some function x. But the partial of p with respect to z, that would have this equation. There's p, and take the partial with respect to z. But of course, it doesn't matter when we're taking uh, second order partial equations, which order we do it in. We could take the partial of f with respect to z, then with respect to x. But if this is an exact differential, then the partial of f with respect to z, that's r. That's what r has to be. So what we have then is that if this is an exact differential, the partial of p with respect to z equals the partial of r with respect to x. And notice the symmetry. We take the partial of this with respect to z and it equals the partial of that with respect to x. Now, what about the partial of p with respect to y? 
It's the same thing as the two-dimensional case that we did in the earlier videos. P, of, if this is an exact differential, P, of course, has to be the partial of F with respect to X. Then we're taking another partial differential. But we can switch the order in which you perform the partial differentials. So these are entirely equal. But if this is an exact differential, the partial of F with respect to Y, that's Q. So we have the partial of P with respect to Y equals the partial of Q with respect to X, just like we did before. And we have that same symmetry. We're taking the partial of this with respect to that variable Y, and it equals the partial of this with respect to that variable X. Now, we have the partial of Q with respect to X here. We can also take the partial of Q with respect to Z. But if this is an exact differential, Q is the partial of F with respect to Y. Now we can interchange these. So we have this equation. But the partial of F with respect to Z, if this is an exact differential, that's what R is. R is the partial of F with respect to Z. So we have the partial of Q with respect to Z equals the partial of R with respect to Y. And again, the same kind of symmetry holds up. We're taking the partial of Q with respect to Z, and that's equal to the partial of R with respect to Y. And again, we do not take partial differentials with this with respect to X, or that with respect to Y, or that with respect to Z. So these cover all the possibilities. So what we've established is that when we have three variables and we're in three dimensions, these are the equations and that are a test for exactness. This has to be equal to this. This has to be equal to this. And this has to be equal to this. So suppose that we have this expression. Would this then be an exact differential? So we have three equations that have to be satisfied. First is that the partial of P with respect to Z has to equal the partial of R with respect to X. That's one equation. And the partial of P with respect to Y equals the partial of Q with respect to X. That's number two. And then number three is the partial of Q with respect to Z equals the partial of R with respect to Y. All three of these have to hold up if indeed this is an exact differential. So let's see what happens. Let's try number one. This is P. We want to take the partial of this with respect to Z. So we have partial with respect to Z of 2xy minus Z cubed. And that will equal minus 3 times Z squared. Now we want to take the partial of R, that's this, with respect to X. Now we'll have a minus sign out here. So we have partial with respect to X of minus 3XZ squared minus 1. Take that with respect to x, and we have minus 3z squared. So these set of equations are satisfied. Let's take a look at the second set. The partial of p with respect to y. So again, we have partial with respect to y of 2xy 
2xy minus z cubed. Take that partial with respect to y, and that equals 2x. And that has to be the partial of q with respect to x. Take the partial of that with respect to x, and indeed we, we will get 2x. So this equation is satisfied. How about the partial of the q with respect to z? So we're taking the partial with respect to z of x squared. That's 0. There is no z expression. There is no z variable in here. OK, then we'll take the partial r with respect to y. The partial with respect to y of minus 3x z squared minus 1. And there's no y variable here. That equals 0. So all three equations are satisfied. Therefore, this is an exact differential. Now, we're going to close the video out here, but we want to leave it with this question. Suppose then that this was an integral. Yeah, let's just write it over. Suppose we had this closed integral, be about a space curve, I guess, where we have 2x y minus z cubed dx plus x squared dy minus 3xz squared plus 1 dz. Now remember when we had the two-dimensional case. This is an exact differential. In two dimensions, if we have an exact differential and we have it about a closed, taking a line integral about a closed curve, it comes out to equal zero. And the reason, do, the reason it does, as we explained in the previous videos, is because of Green's theorem. This is two dimensions now, so that's a function of x and y, a function of x and y. Well, if these are exact, and we're in the two-dimensional case, that means the partial of q with respect to x equals the partial of p with respect to y. That's zero. Therefore, if, that's, if this is an exact differential, that is zero. What that tells us is that this means, of course, that our starting point and our end point are the same, but regardless of the path that's in between, this integral always has to be 0. So we might have a situation where, say, we're starting here. We go about and come back to there. That line integral, about that closed line integral, p dx plus q dy equals 0 if this is exact. Or it could be that kind of a path. It's still going to equal 0. The path that is taken is irrelevant. That is always equal to 0. And again, we can show that why that is true by using Green's theorem on the plane. And we uh, had several videos here where we derived this. So you can find the derivation for this in our earlier videos in this series. But here's our question. These now are in two dimensions. So this is a x and y. This would be a function of x and y. But here, this is an exact differential, but we are in three dimensions. Does this equal zero? that closed 
line integral. Well, we can't use Green's theorem in the plane to answer that for us, so we will consider this question in the next video. We have a three-dimensional um, exact differential right here. We've shown what the test is for it. Now, if we have a closed line integral with a three-dimensional exact differential, does that equal zero the way it must for a two-dimensional exact differential? And we'll take up that question um, in the in the next video. And again, um, the playlist for these videos for vector analysis, you can find it at the website at digital-university.org.